Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Let's start our afternoon session. And first speaker today is Professor Stanislav Shapashnikov from uh, Moscow State University. And he will speak about nonlinear Fock and Planck Kolmogorov equations. Please start. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank for the organizers uh, to the pleasant opportunity to talk on this conference. And uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, Alexeyevich, and I should say that your contribution in PDE is outstanding and very inspired. My uh, talk is uh, devoted to the nonlinear Fokker Planck Kolmogorov equations. Uh, it is a short title, but it is a very big business. There are a lot of directions. Say you can consider such equations on domain with different boundary conditions. You can consider such equations on the whole spaces. There are different uh, types of nonlinearities, different types of uh, uh, space of solutions. Uh, very interesting direction concerns with uh, degenerate equations and so on. But uh, today I'd like to speak about a uh, very short part of this big business. I'd like to speak about stationary solution, existence of stationary solution, and uh, the convergence to the stationary solution. Um, and, um, and the third, uh, on, on the next slides, I'd like to present uh, uh, next three slides, I'd like to present all that I'd like to talk on my uh, 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 today. Uh, the first, I, I'd like to discuss such equations. Uh, the nonlinear focal punk Kolmogorov equations, certainly on the first point of view, it's, it is a classical parabolic equation. But even uh, in linear case, when we consider the Fokker Planck, or, or we say that we consider the Fokker Planck Kolmogorov equation, we in many cases consider the classical parabolic equations, but uh, in some specific class of functions or specific class of solutions. Uh, for instance, uh, we consider non negative solution, we uh, require that uh, rho t. Uh, has a finite integral over x, and this integral is constant. That is, does not it doesn't depend on t. Uh, we consider some specific type of linearity, non-linearities. Uh, say, if we consider so-called makin vlasov equation, we consider non-local non-linearities in other. Uh, problem, say in reaction diffusion, we can see the local nonlinearities and so on. But uh, uh, I, I should note that even in a linear case, the situation has several specific uh, uh, moments. So I'd like to discuss such parabolic and such elliptic equation. Typical example of drift coefficient B is the following. Uh, I should note that uh, we write uh, in B rho t on x and rho t. Why? Uh, the dependence on rho t x, this is a local nonlinearity. Uh, here, this is a parameter u. Uh, certainly, we can consider not only uh, degree u, but we can consider arbitrary function of u. Uh, this is only example here. And we consider the non-local term. For instance, the integral with some kernel, k. So uh, this is a typical example of our nonlinearity. Uh, note that in equation, the part uh, in divergence has a special form. Is as a product of solution rho t and the vector field B. And nonlinearity uh, uh, is in the B. 
if B, say, linear with respect to the T, then we obtain nonlinear equation here. So we consider such equations. This is a typical example and the main results. There exists a number M0, positive number, such that for every uh, number M from the interval from zero till M0, uh, there exists a unique positive continuous solution of the stationary equation such that the integral of this solution equals M. For sufficiently small initial condition, uh, the solution of uh, the Cauchy problem for parabolic equation has a unique positive global in time solution rho t such that the integral of rho t equals m. And uh, this solution of parabolic equation converges exponentially to the, uh, the solution of stationary equation. Certainly, I do not write here the assumptions and so on. It will be later but excuse me yes. uh, uh, this uh, equation in the second statement uh, am i right that the um, uh, initial condition should satisfy just this uh, integral uh, yes and what kind of small uh, yeah, what, okay. what does it mean small i, I think this question yes mm, yeah it will be later. Okay. It will be later. Uh, certainly, the, the integral of the initial condition should uh, be M. It's exactly. Um, yes, but in general, this is all that I'd like to speak today. Such equations, such example, and uh, these results. So, I should know, I, 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 I say at the beginning that there are a lot of papers and a lot of results about the Fokker-Planck-Almogorov equations. And I present here only two books where you can find long reference lists. Uh, the first book, it's a well-known uh, monograph about nonlinear Fokker-Planck-Almogorov equa Fokker equations, where you can find a lot of examples, concrete examples, models, and uh, some uh, methods to solve or to analyze the nonlinear focal punk equations. And the second book is uh, more theoretical. This is some theoretical foundations for the focal punk Magorov equations. And uh, here you can find some uh, regularity results, existence results, uh, uniqueness results, some uh, to uh, so, 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 some theory in infinite dimensional and so on. So um, we will consider mixed nonlinearity, mixed local and non-local nonlinearities. Why we consider such types of nonlinearities? The first motivation uh, is that uh, there are some biological uh, models where the drift coefficient is a combination of uh, local and non-local terms. The second motivation uh, is the following. At um, last time, um, uh, there are several papers where uh, investigate the approximation of local nonlinearity but by non-local. It is very interesting thing. Uh, you know that if we consider, say, classical continuity equation, nonlinear continuity equation, if we consider this equation with uh, local nonlinearity, we obtain the so called Khrushchev situation, Khrushchev solution. We need to consider special type entropy solutions and so on. And situation quite difficult. But if we consider the continuity equation with non-local nonlinearity, say Vlasov equation, then in the space of measure, we have very nice theory 
existence, uniqueness, stability, and so on. And the very interesting idea is that uh, is the following: Let us approximate local nonlinearity by non-local, where we have the nice theory. There are several papers by Maria Colombo and uh, Katerina Hope and so on, uh, where this is uh, this approach uh, uh, are considered. So this is the second motivation why we'd like to consider both types of nonlinearities, local and non-local in one equation. And um, the third uh, motivation um, is the following. In concrete example, uh, you see very close phenomena in local and non-local case when you discuss the existence of stationary solution or convergence to the stationary solution. Certainly, uh, one can informal think that all nonlinearities non-local, uh, and in some case, we consider kernel that is Dirac function, delta function. So, uh, the specific of the considered situation is that we consider specific class of solutions and we consider the specific class of nonlinearities when we uh, consider together local and non local terms. In more concrete situation, there are a lot of uh, papers about uh, equations of such, type, uh, such types. For instance, the following equation three are considered in, is considered in many papers. Uh, this is, uh, say, in monograph uh, by Luigi Ambrosio, Nicola Gilli, and uh, Giuseppe Savare, you can find a theory of such equations from uh, gradient flows point of view. Uh, and um, certainly, for such equations, the structure of these equations is very is very important. Um, note that here we see the combination of non-local term with the intersection uh, potential W and the local term, say H prime or F, depends on the solution rho T. Let us consider very particular case, but very interesting. Let here F equals to the product of rho T and one plus rho T. Let V, capital V, the square, X squared divided by two, W equals zero and uh, H prime equals to this uh, difference between two logarithms. Then we obtain if we calculate here, we obtain the very famous equation. This is so-called Bazein-Stein-Fokker-Planck equation that appears in uh, physics uh, in the bosons boson theory. This is a, a particular case of our situation when we consider drift B uh, equals to uh, minus x minus product x and u. There is no non-local term, only local nonlinearity. Here we can find all stationary solutions explicitly. Uh, indeed, let us can uh, no, one can verify that this formula is uh, really give the stationary solution, but uh, we can verify that uh, this formula gives all stationary solutions. Say, uh, if uh, rho positive smooth stationary solution, then we can uh, note that this equality holds with function v equals x squared. And the uh, formula in 
for informal uh, integrating this equality with respect to rho dx, we obtain that the function uh, x squared rho and uh, one plus rho, this, is the pro this product is integrable on the whole space. This is the first observation. In particular, the product of rho and one plus rho is integrable on the uh, on, on whole space. Next, one can consider the function capital U and rewrite the equation stationary equation in the short form with a classical divergence type elliptic equation with a coefficient rho, uh, product rho and one plus rho. So in standard way, we can multiply this equation by u integrating by part and apply the kashi bunikovsky inequality and obtain this estimate. So if we replace c by function psi n that tends to one, if n tends to infinity, we obtain the following inequality, letting n to infinity and obtain that this integral equals zero. Uh, it follows that u is a constant and we obtain the following trivial equation for the density rho. If we solve it, we obtain the, uh, this expression. So uh, in this concrete situation, we see all stationary solutions. And uh, let us consider one dimensional and two dimensional case. If we take the constant beta equals one, then this function has a singular point zero and integral equals infinity. This singularity is not integrable. It means that uh, if we take uh, the parameter beta, we can find uh, for every m stationary solution rho with integral equals m. Moreover, it turns out that in this situation, in one dimensional and two dimensional case, for every uh, uh, number m, positive number m, there exists a global solution of the Cauchy problem such that for each time t integral equals m. And this solution converges to the stationary solution. This uh, assertion was um, obtained by in several papers, but Jose Carilla and uh, so on. And uh, we see that for every m here, we have the stationary solution and for every m, we have the convergence to this solution. But uh, I should note that it is not trivial. The corresponding papers are, are not trivial and not short, even for this concrete equation. So if d larger than three, than three, then the integral is finite and the stationary equation does not have a solution with integral larger than this quantity m1. Moreover, uh, Giuseppe Toscani investigated the blow up phenomena in this case and proved that for, the, the, that for sufficiently large M, there is no global solution of the Cauchy problem. Uh, the singular case is also investigated by Hope where she used the approximation uh, the local nonlinearity by non-local terms. This is the first example, uh, and this is the first motivation for me to to uh, thinking about this problem. Here we have the very very short 
Poker Plank Magor equation. And we see that for some M, we have solution. Uh, for sufficiently large M, there is no solution and there is no global solution for parabolic equations. Let us consider another equation uh, where we consider poor uh, non-local equation. Let D equals one, one dimensional case. And uh, let B has the following very simple form, minus X plus mean of rho. This is a, a very trivial example. And if we fixed rho, we obtain very nice equation, minus X plus, plus constant. This is a very nice Fokker-Planck equation. We can write explicitly the stationary solution. We have very nice global solution of parabolic equation and so on. But if we consider the nonlinear, we obtain very, uh, very strange situation. All functions rho a, this is a Gaussian density with mean a. This is probability densities. That is, we consider the case when m equals one. And all of these functions are solutions to the stationary equation with such b. That is, in this case, very nice coefficient, very simple dependence on the rho. The stationary equation has continuum different uh, solutions with the same integral. It is, uh, it, it is not difficult to verify that this is really a solution. If we insert uh, rho a in our drift b, we obtain minus x plus plus a. This is exactly logarithmic derivative of rho a. And we calculate and uh, see that uh, equation is fulfilled. Moreover, uh, if uh, we consider that a equals zero, the standard Gaussian density, and multiply it by factor m, we obtain solution for every m. So for every m, we have solution, but for m equals, zero, equals one, we have continuum different stationary solutions. The next interesting example demonstrate that the nonlinear case uh, is not stable. Uh, if you give short perturbation, add some small constant to drift coefficient, you obtain very different picture. You obtain a uh, very uh, new situation immediately. In the previous example, when delta equals zero, we see that there are continuum different probability solutions, solutions with integral equals one. Now we plus to this drift B constant delta, and we obtain the situation when there is no solutions at all. Indeed, if we assume that uh, there is a, a solution, then we can integrate by part and uh, uh, write the integral uh, equality for the solution with function phi. Then we take phi equals x and obtain that the sum of these two terms equals zero, the second term is delta, the first term is equal uh, equals uh, zero because in uh, uh, under integral, the second uh, term is constant and the integral of rho equals one. And we obtain that this expression equals zero. So delta should be zero, but delta is not zero. 
This is the third interesting example demonstrating that uh, the situation is not is not trivial. E even in very simple situation, you can obtain a lot of solutions. Small perturbation could give that there is no solution at all. But now let us consider linear case. Very short and very simple example of linear case when b equals zero. Then we consider we obtain classical Laplace operator, and it is well known that this equation uh, does not have non-zero solution in L1 on whole space. This is immediately comes from Liouville theorem and so on. So for every M, there is no solution. But drift B is, seems to be very nice, equals zero without any uh, nonlinear terms and so on. In the linear case, when we like to construct a stationary solution or solution of parabolic equation, the classical assumption is uh, the existence of Lipunov function. This is the classical sufficient condition for the existence of positive stationary solution in L1 and the existence of solution of parabolic equation. Uh, when we say about the Lipunov function, we mean that there exists a function V such that V tends to plus infinity at infinity and the following inequality holds. If uh, we have such function, then there exists a unique positive non-negative solution rho of the equation stationary linear equation. Here I say only about linear equation and B depends only on X. Uh, such that rho is non-negative and integral equals one. For instance, it is enough to have the following uh, condition that product B and X tends to minus infinity at infinity. Then you can uh, take V X equals X square and verify the above condition that guarantees the existence of solution. So the classical approach in linear case, you need the uh, Lipunov function. So, what about to convert about convergence to stationary equations? Assume that B is locally bounded, then uh, and uh, assume that there exists Lipunov function such that the following inequality holds for some constant C1 and C2. Then for every probability density sigma, uh, in general, you can take not only density, you can take any probability measure. The solution, there exists a global solution of such parabolic, uh, such uh, of this Cauchy problem, such that for every t, this solution is a probability density, and you have this exponential convergence to the stationary equations. A row is the stationary equations from the previous slide. This is a very well-known theorem based on the well-known uh, Harris ergodic theorem. And we see that in linear case, we need Lipunov function, and then we immediately obtain stationary solution and uh, convergence, exponential convergence to the stationary solution. For example, if we have this short uh, condition on drift B, we immediately have the existence of stationary solution and this estimate that demonstrates the uh, convergence of root T to rho. So this is a linear case. Now, uh, uh, this is uh, examples that I'd like to present before the uh, strong formulation of results, but I'd like to give one more remark 
we'd like to construct solution uh, for uh, such that integral of this solution equals m, and solution is non-negative. But we can divide by rho, uh, or, or, or rho by this constant m, and uh, construct probability solution. But uh, solution of the new equation with new drift coefficient b m. So what is uh, uh, what is this uh, this new drift b m? Assume that b is continuous for simplicity. Then the difference between b m and p x zero zero is small for small m. It means that when we consider small numbers m, we consider small perturbations of linear equations by, by nonlinear terms. And uh, this some uh, reasons why we obtain the nice theory for small number m. We obtain nice theory because we have nice situation for linear case, and for small parameter m, we have small perturbation of this linear case by, by nonlinear terms. In non-local case, this uh, phenomena well studied. For instance, uh, if we consider the drift with non-local nonlinearity with small parameter epsilon, the existence of probability stationary solution, the global, the existence of global solution to the parabolic fokker planck kolmogorov equation, the convergence to the stationary solution hold for sufficiently small epsilon. When uh, coefficients uh, are very nice, it is uh, well-known results. Uh, when, uh, and if you'd like to, to consider convergence with respect to Kantarovich metric, this is uh, well-known results. Uh, about uh, the, the convergence with respect to total variation in um, L1 uh, was obtained uh, by uh, Oleg Budkovsky in the case when nonlinear term is bounded. Uh, Everly and uh, Gulin and Zimmer for the linear growth and Lipschitz uh, kernel K and term B0. And uh, next we generalize this uh, on more general situation without assumptions of Lipschitz or linear growth and so on. So in non-local case, it is a typical well-known situation that small perturbation gives the nice results for the non-linear equation. So the next uh, uh, remark, um, at last decade, there are several papers by Barbu and uh, Rochner about the nonlinear fokker planck magor equations with very specific type coefficients. Uh, here you see the equation five. Uh, here the nonlinearity. Uh, not only in uh, the drift coefficient, but in diffusion. I consider in my talk the poor Laplace operator in main part. Certainly we can consider the general diffusion matrix, but uh, when you consider diffusion matrix depending on the solution, it is quite difficult situation. Uh, and um, here you see the very specific drift coefficient and uh, very specific, uh, the second order part. And um, it is in, it, it, Barbu and Rochner obtained very interesting results. They consider such equations as a conservation law and uh, consider the Khrushchev definition of the solution and obtain some nice result in L1. But here is a very specific structure of the equation. So uh, 
below I present uh, several results, and I should note that we consider mixed local and non-local nonlinear terms. Do not assume that coefficients are smooth or global bounded. And we allow that coefficients and kernels grow at infinity. This is uh, some new um, additional things to this theory. So let us consider uh, this space of functions, continuous function, non-negative, and this integral with weight, polynomial weight is finite. We suppose that uh, B is defined on this space, bounded on uh, every bounded set, measurable certainly. We use the following notation, LG for the this second order differential uh, elliptic operator. And uh, we will see that function is a row, is a solution of the stationary linear equation, is the following integral identity holds. This is standard definition, solution of linear equation. And we say that rho is a solution of nonlinear equation if rho is a solution of the corresponding linear equation with drift depends on rho. So we need the following norms. M G is a notation for the integral of function G. And this is a list of our assumptions. The first assumption is the growth assumptions. We um, consider the polynomial growth at infinity. The second one uh, is the uh, assumptions that there exist sufficiently nice Lipunov function. This is dissipative assumption, guarantee the existence of Lipunov function. And the third assumptions give them some uh, Lipschitz, local Lipschitz continuity of our coefficients. I should note that this is global assumptions with respect to X, but local assumptions with respect to U and G, with respect to nonlinear terms. Uh, because in H2 and H3, we assume that this inequality holds on bounded set, bounded set of G and U. So, typical example when all of such assumptions are fulfilled. For simplicity, I write here uh, K equals M equals one. You can see that K uh, is the growth of the kernel, M is the growth of the uh, depend uh, of B. So the first theorem, they, they exist a number M0 such that for every M from interval zero M0, the stationary equation has a unique solution row with the following properties. Moreover, rho is a locally holder continuous function. Certainly, rho will be a Sobolev function, so on. This is a theorem gives this theorem gives the existence of stationary solutions. So, the same definition of, for the parabolic equation and. The, to, to, uh, in order to formulate results for parabolic equation, we need some new norm. This is the sum of integral norm with exponential weight and supremum norm with polynomial weight. And we assume that uh, initial condition satisfies these assumptions. And uh, two theorem about the existence of global solution, if initial assumption satisfies these conditions, that integral equals m, and this specific norm uh, is estimated by gamma multiplied by m, then there exists a global solution 
of our problem. And under this equation, these assumptions, this solution converge to the stationary solution of stationary equations. So this is the main results. If I'm not mistaken, my time is, I should finish. Yes? Yes. Yes, you are right. This is nice. Okay, so if you are finished, let's thank the speaker for the nice talk. And uh, are there any questions, comments? Uh, yes, please, Nicolas Zade. Hello, Professor. Thanks for the very nice talk. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how would you uh, hope to extend your results to uh, the generated uh, diffusion matrices? Because when you showed equality number five, uh, you, you said that one could take uh, a more general diffusion matrix as long as it doesn't depend on the solution. So how would you deal with a degenerated diff diffusion matrix? For example, kind of like uh, hyperelliptic operators, but where you would um, perturbate it to get something nonlinear. Oh, uh, this, this situation, uh, for, for my knowledge, the situation is the following. If we consider non-local, uh, uh, non-local, uh, non-linearity terms. There are several papers about the diffusion depends on solution. Some, uh, for, for, for instance, there are our paper with uh, Bogachev and Dochner where we consider the non-degenerate diffusion depends on solution. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some classical paper about the convergence when e and uh, diffusion depends on uh, solution and drift depends on solution, uh, say by Veritennikov and so on. There are some uh, papers about the convergence to the stationary solution. And, but, 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 uh, and, and in this paper, the convergence with respect to the Kantarovich metric, we here discuss the convergence in L1, so-called total variations, different situation. And the, the, uh, there is some, um, several papers about the degenerate case. Say uh, in um, some papers of uh, Eberly and Zimmer, Gulen, uh, devoted to the degenerate case. Say uh, for when, when you consider so-called Langevin dynamics and obtain for, uh, with respect some uh, uh, variables uh, non-degenerate with respect to another degenerate. And uh, uh, for my knowledge, uh, this can be found in, in some papers by Eberly and Bullen and Zimmer. For our situation with mixed non-reality, I, I do not know uh, results. I think, I think if we consider general setting without specific form that I uh, demonstrate uh, here, here you, you can obtain the degeneration, certainly. But if you do not assume some specific form of this uh, nonlinear term, term in main part, I, I do not know general result. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. I think this is very, very, no, this is difficult. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because Pardus medium equation is a nice example of such problem. And uh, even in this situation, it's a big, big business. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there is one more question. Please, Joseph Francisco. Yes, in fact, I have two questions <clears throat> from an outsider of Fokker Planck and Fokker Planck Komograph. And the first question is maybe too easy to answer. What is the difference between Fokker Planck and Fokker Planck uh, Komograph? What means Komograph uh, difference? Is the nonlinear part? Is just because it is nonlinear, non local? No, 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 it's 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 only historically thing ah. because uh, uh, in physics uh, such equations named by Fokker Planck in probability say in, in say when you consider some uh, Makin blast and so on uh, such equations named by Kolmogorov and uh, uh, ten or twenty years ago. In, in papers uh, erased uh, uh, in, in some, some authors uh, decide to, to, to say to, to, to write uh, Fokker Planck and Magorov together. So it's a, broader, it's a broader class in a certain sense. 
or it's, 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 not, uh, it's the same class. Fokker Pankel Magor equation it is it uh, is double divergence form equation. Exactly. Okay. Okay. This is all can be uh, we, we can call Kolmogorov Fokker Planck. Historically, Fokker Planck was first, but Kolmogorov was more general. He devoted such equation for diffusion in general form. Uh, historically, this should be Kolmogorov equation as in probability theory, but in physical theory, uh, this is Fokker Planck, and this is a uh, all together, <laughs> all together. No, no, it it, it does not uh, it, it 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 does not deal with a specific form. Okay, specific okay, form. okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Now I have a second question. Which is maybe I think you have limited time, but for someone that is uh, understand that is a huge domain with a lot of people working uh, and a lot of full results. In your perspective, what is now the main new direction in these type of equations? What is the main open problem that remains? Uh, I, I think uh, I, 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 I think there are a lot of open problems, but but uh, for for me, interesting the um, connection with probability representations okay. in different in different situation when when you write the process corresponds to the solution. And uh, the other thing I, I, I uh, for for me very interesting to investigate the partial degenerate equation, when uh, like in Langevin dynamics, when you have the degeneration not for all variables, then you you consider the dynamics that uh, uh, at the same time as diffusion and as deterministic. This is uh, this is all together it's very difficult. It is very interesting from the say from theoretically because uh, you can uh, consider different assumptions on coefficients with respect to different uh, variables. And it is very interesting uh, how to uh, what, it is interesting to to describe the behavior of solutions in the situation when uh, these solutions, random in some sense and deterministic in some sense. I think this is very interesting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, so let's send the speaker again. Thank you. Please stop uh, recording. <laughs>